I'm Stephen Coprens, Managing Partner of Coprens Law LLC. And today I want to discuss an issue of great importance to 8A program mentors and their protégés. A mentor-protégé agreement, in this case, which expired one year after its approval by the SBA, did not protect an 8A protégé and its mentor from affiliation, and it meant that their 8A mentor-protégé joint venture was an ineligible large business. A recent decision of the SBA's Office of Hearings and Appeals, also known as OAG, is a cautionary tale for 8A protégés and their mentors, and it highlights the importance of securing timely SBA reauthorization of 8A mentor-protégé agreements. OAH's decision in this case is called Size Appeal of North Star Magnus Pacific Joint Venture. The docket number here is SBA number SIZ-5715 if you want to look that up. This case involved a joint venture between a company called North Star Construction and Engineering, which was a participant in the 8A program, and North Star's mentor, a company called Magnus Pacific Corporation, which apparently was a large business. On July 5th, 2014, the SBA approved a mentor-protege agreement between North Star and Magnus Pacific. This mentor-protege agreement stated that the initial period of the agreement was one year. Under the agreement, North Star, as the protege, was required to request continuance of the mentor-protege agreement within 60 days prior to its expiration if North Star wanted the agreement to continue beyond one year. The SBA also sent North Star a letter approving the mentor-protege agreement. That letter specifically stated that, and I'm quoting here, this agreement shall expire after one year unless the SBA approves an extension. That's the end of that quote. So on May 12, 2015, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers released a solicitation for flood risk management and ecosystem restoration. The solicitation was issued as a small business set-aside. Proposals were due on July 17, 2015. Dates are important here, if you remember the date of the uh, mentor protege agreement, the date the proposals are due July 17th now, the following year, 2015. On July 6, 2015, North Star and Magnus Pacific signed an amendment agreeing to extend their mentor protege agreement. That amendment was later submitted to North Star's local SBA district office for approval, although neither the joint venture nor the SBA could ultimately determine the exact date when the SBA received this extension request. Now, on July 16, 2015, that's one day before the deadline for proposals, North Star and Magnus Pacific submitted a proposal in response to this core solicitation. The offeror the joint, the, was actually a joint venture between the two parties, an 8A better protege joint venture is how these parties co constituted their offer. In its evaluation of proposals, the core determined that this joint venture had proposed the lowest price. However, the core found that the joint venture was unacceptable for various responsibility-related reasons, which aren't really clarified what those are in, in OHA's decision, not particularly relevant to what I'm discussing here. The Corps, as it's required to do under the, the law, referred the matter to the SBA for review under the SBA Certificate of Competency process. And during the course of that review, a question arose as to whether the joint venture actually qualified as a small business. As the SBA was doing this review, North Star's SBA District Office approved an extension to the mentor protege agreement. That approval was issued on October 30, 2015, a couple months after the proposal had been submitted. And that extension stated that the agreement was extended for a period of one year, quote, through July 4, 2016. The SBA Area Office, which was examining evaluating size issues, this is a different office than the one that had issued the extension. The SBA Area Office is a regional office, which was evaluating the size issue, uh, took a look at this extension, and it determined that the extension didn't specify when it was effective. So the SBA area office said, well, we think it's effective on October 30th, 2015, which is the date that the district office actually issued. Because the original mentor-protege agreement had expired on July 5th, and because the extension wasn't effective until October 30th, the SBA area office concluded that the mentor-protege agreement had not been effective on July 17th, when the joint venture submitted its proposal. So according to the SBA area office now, there's a window there. You had the original mentor-protege agreement, it expired in early July, and then it didn't kick back in until October 30th, and in that window, when the mentor protege agreement was in effect, that's when the proposal was submitted. According to the SBA area office, without an active mentor protege agreement in effect, the joint venture was unable to avail itself of the special mentor protege exception from affiliation. The resulting affiliation between North Star and Magnus caused the joint venture to exceed the 36.5 million size standard for that core contract. 
And so the SBA area office issued a size determination finding the joint venture to be ineligible for award. Not surprisingly, the joint venture uh, filed a size appeal with the SBA Office of Hearings and Appeals. The joint venture argued in part that the SBA area office had erred by finding that the mentor protege agreement was not in effect on July 17th. The joint venture contended that a mentor protege agreement should remain in effect until the protege's 8A annual review. Now, OHA began its analysis by noting that generally two firms that form a joint venture to perform a contract will be considered affiliated for purposes of that contract. However, there is a special exception from affiliation for joint ventures between an 8A program participant and its SBA approved mentor. OHA wrote, and I'm quoting here, that the regulations are clear that SBA must approve the mentor protege agreement before the two firms may submit an offer as a joint venture in order for the joint venture to receive the exclusion from affiliation. And in this case, OHA held that the joint venture has not proved that the area office clearly erred in determining that an approved mentor protege agreement was not in place as of the date the joint venture submitted its proposal. OHA noted that the joint venture agreement itself, the, excuse me, the mentor protege agreement itself, and the SBA's approval letter suggested that the initial mentor protege agreement would expire on July 5. OHA then held that the SBA District Office's October 30th approval didn't apply retroactively. OHA wrote that under the SBA's regulations, size is determined as of the date the concern submits its initial offer, including price. Here, as we know, the joint venture submitted its initial proposal on July 17th. Accordingly, OHA wrote, actions from the SBA District Office subsequent to this date, July 17th, are not relevant to whether there was an approved mentor protege agreement in place as of the date the joint venture submitted its proposal. The OHA denied the joint venture's size appeal and affirmed the SBA's ruling that the joint venture was ineligible for award in this contract. The 8A mentor protege exception from affiliation is a powerful tool can allow joint ventures to successfully bid on set-aside contracts, even where one member of the joint venture, the mentor, is a large business. But as this North Star Magna specific case demonstrates, the special exception is only valid if there is an active SBA-approved 8A mentor-protege agreement in place on the date of the joint venture's initial price proposal. 